floss tube. Welcome to a different spot in my stitchy home. My name is Becca and today is Sunday, May 17th, 2020. And this is the first of I think two to be determined, but I think two videos where I parade through my needlepoint and counted canvas work, whips, and kitted projects. So if you're new to this channel or whatever floss tube is, uh, this is a channel mainly about cross stitch, but I do quilting and needlepoint and canvas work and crochet and all the, all the good fiber needle art stuff. <laughs> so I, this is part of a, I think, 10 part special on my floss tube YouTube channel to celebrate my one year of having this channel. So thanks for coming by to visit with me. And I am currently sitting in a small walk-in closet. The door is right here. So I'm just right inside the doorway. And this is where I keep uh, the craft stuff that is not in my main stitching room downstairs. I took over the formal living dining room area uh, the formal living room is right off the foyer and it connects to the formal dining room which is right off the kitchen just one whole side of the house we didn't really need a formal living and dining room so that's just where i started sitting and doing my cross stitch or i'd sit at the dining room table to sew on my quilts or other sewing projects so i finally just realized this needs to just be officially <laughs> my crafting area and so I kind of moved the furniture around um, brought in some anyway I just moved some things around and reorganized and decided that in order to have the area look less junky or cluttered or whatever you want to call it just less confusing to me visually that I could move the things I wasn't working on and wasn't probably going to work on soon. I can move them up here into this closet. I already had some things, just uh, photo albums and um, just a variety of things, but I, I said, okay, this really needs to be, oh, I had gift wrap in here and boxes and stuff like that. And um, so now it is really my craft closet. There's, there's a couple of non-craft items, but um, for the most part, it, it's my craft closet. And this is where my canvas work and needlepoint was. And rather than carry it all downstairs to do this video and then bring it all back upstairs, I thought, why not just try to film it in here? And the light looks pretty good. We'll see how the color turns out. Um, there's an overhead bulb. And then in the bedroom in front of me that this closet is off of, there's an overhead light. And if you can hear the air conditioning, I'm in Georgia, it's getting hot out there, so the air conditioner's running right now to cool our, our upstairs. So anyway, I hope y'all are doing well, and I hope you're enjoying these floss tube specials and getting a chance to see some of my stash. So, in no particular order, and I haven't even done the prep work of going through and writing down the name of the project and who it's by and all that. Um, if I need to cut out any of the crinkle crinkle, I will. We'll just, we'll just see how this goes. And then tomorrow I may do something different with my kitted projects. These are all whips. And if you're, if you're not familiar with when I say canvas work, it's stitching on either mono canvas or Congress cloth. Um, mono canvas could be 14 count, typically 18 count. Um, Congress cloth, I think, is 24 count, and it's kind of, kind of like a, a cross. It's like if Ada and mono canvas had a baby. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, or a half sister to Hardanger or something like that. Um, 
but this is counted work. Uh, whereas needlepoint, at least this is me, this is me defining it, I think of canvas work as counted. So instead of stitching on linen or Ada, you're stitching on this stiffer, this stiffer, uh, what's called canvas. And there's different other types of canvases. There's Interlock and Penelope and, and whatever. But most, most all of my stuff, I think, is mono canvas. And then when I think of needlepoint, I really think of painted canvas or printed where there's a design printed on the canvas or painted on the canvas and then you're you're stitching over that you know painted printed area either covering up the painted design or using stitches that let some of that color through and and you'll see what I mean in just a minute when I when I show you a design that's a painted canvas this first project was a class that I took I believe in March of 2018 and it's called Walking the Water's Edge and the top is a, a Florentine Bargello with different shades of DMC blue mixed with with white and then when you get to the bottom there's eyelet stitches and a bullion knot starfish And I had never done a, a bullion stitch. I had heard about them that they were tricky. So I learned how to do that stitch. We, you'll see I stitched it off to the side, practiced a little bit. And like I said, this is counted canvas work. After the class was over, like months or a year or so later, Diane, the designer, um, had some needle minders made with the design on the needle minder. Isn't that cute? And this is by Accoutrement Designs. And so I got one for myself and for the friend that took the class with me. So here's my, let's see if we can do this. Here's my progress. I did practice a few of the eyelet stitches on the bottom and I practiced this bullion stitch on the side. Um, but it's, it's like I said, you start off with white and then you start, it's several strands of the blue or the white and you start, you know, adding the light blue and then a little medium blue and then, you know, all the way up per the instructions. That was a very, very enjoyable class. Diane Herman has a math professor background, and so you learn this design is based on a math formula. Okay, this ne next project was also a class. Uh, it was initially a class I was supposed to take at the National Assembly of Needleworkers, NAN, in I think March of 2017, no, further back than that, 2016, 2015, 2015 maybe, um, and I didn't get to go, my mom was in the hospital, so I didn't get to go, but I had paid for the kit, so the teacher sent me um, the kit, and the design is to make this kimono on 18 count mono canvas. Now, let's see. And there's some mirrors in here, some little mirrored, um, what do you want to call them? Little things, but you attach the mirror. There's another one right there. And so, I, but I didn't start it on my own. And then last year, uh, she offered the same class through the Shiny Needle Society, which is a free group you can join. Um, I think there's a website. And so I started it, and I even got one of the mirrors put on. Um, right 
there. And see, it's a, uh, I need a way to cover the back. So Tony Gertis is the teacher, and the right W-R-I-G-H-T kimono is the name of the project. So you can see that the kimono shape is drawn on the canvas, and then you follow the stitch guide, if you will, to, to stitch all the stitches to fill everything in. This next project may get abandoned, or at least the direction I was heading may, I may abandon. Uh, there's no pattern. I, I was using some of the designs out of um, Debbie's Designs Hot Stuff, and this is just a working copy of it, but Debbie's Designs Hot Stuff was to stitch this. Lots of different specialty stitches. So I um, actually want to stitch that in, I think, a blue colorway. Um, but anyway, I was, I was pulling some of the stitches to do this. Well, Anyway, you get the general idea. And I was just pulling threads that I liked and kind of had an idea of the colors I wanted to use were these peaches and greens and red and I think it was all based on this water lilies thread. I'm curious what this is. It's called Painted Desert. really pretty lots of different colors in there so I just pulled other threads that went with that and my reason for stitching these little I have two of them and they weren't my thought was they weren't going to be identical but they would both need to fit into the um, square area drawn there which of course this one is bigger because I have Sudbury House book bookends that my brother-in-law gifted to me and they've, they've got a space that's I think maybe three by four and a half or something like that and I wanted to put cam canvas work into them but I didn't get very far and like I said I'm thinking now now that I'm cross stitching more I I will likely look for a cross stitch that I already have that can fit into that space. All right, another class that I took uh, last year uh, through our local embroiderers guild. We had Curdy Biggs, K U R B Y, K U R. D-Y, Biggs, B-I-G-G-S, come to teach us a different view was the name of the design. And I showed this in a previous floss tube. And it was available in different um, colorways but for our class purposes they only offered the golden glow or what was called black which was this one was like fall colors which is what I got and then this one was more you know black and cream and gold I believe most of the people in the class did the black and cream and gold and I did the fall all colors, um, purples and greens, oh, it's hard to show, red, rust, navy blue, and my canvas 
and 18 count um, vintage country mocha, I think. Okay. I clearly see I should have brought a board up here. But anyway, that's where I got pretty much in class, maybe maybe one day of some stitching after class. And Curdy's designs are just wonderful, just amazing. This next project is one I picked up at a stash sale. It was partially stitched. It's called the Canvas Stitch Sampler. Of the glare, and it's by Lighthouse Designs. So you can see this thread in between is a variegated. It's by Lighthouse Designs. Now, this colorway shown is not like my fade. Um, and then it, but it came with a floss to finish it. A couple, two or three different shades of this kind of bluey green color, teal color. So I got it. It was started, I think, these first four maybe, and so I've done. And then the outline was all stitched too. And so it's just different stitches. They're super fun. Yeah, so the outline was stitched and it was started and it came with a DMC that I needed. And so, it's the alphabet. I could see framing this um, with maybe a gray. Because I think the, can well, the canvas is kind of a greeny gray. Um... If you have any ideas on how I should finish this, let me know. And I have a, I have a needle minder on here backwards, I guess, because I wanted the flat metal on the front, um, but the back is this blingy thing. I'm going to take that off and take that downstairs. Next up, um, I want to interrupt this parade of whips. To show you a project that I finished but yet has not been fully finished. What do I do with it? Here it is. <clears throat> so I'm going to insert a picture of what it would look like fully finished with either a picture or a mirror in the center. And this is my version of that. All right, here we go. Maybe this will kind of sort of work. Um, it's got beads. It's on an opalescent mono canvas. You can see the sequins there. And then the baskets, flowers. More beads and then the cruel flower. So, this design is by Marnie Ritter. And set that aside. Um, so, as you saw from where I, I showed it ahead of time, you cut this, you have a finisher cut this out and make an opening for a picture or a mirror and then the you know the rest of it goes into either you know a mat with a frame or what have you she's uh, Marnie lives in um, I believe Highlands Ranch Colorado and has a frame shop out there that she recommended that did her piece that I showed you a picture of and we went to Colorado last July and I never, I mean, I thought about it, but then I forgot. I never followed through with contacting them to see if I could bring this out there. 
and deliver it in person to be framed. <sighs> but it's beautiful. We also did flower pounding in class. And you can see a little bit of that where we take petals and leaves and pound them. And it puts color on the canvas. Um, it's faded over time. It was, it was much brighter when we first did it. And like I said, that's Picture Perfect by Marnie Ritter. And it has started to rain and storm here, which I can hear because the roof is right here. So, if you hear that. This one... I saw this at uh, Persnickety Stitchers, Stitches in, Z I think, Zionsville, Indiana, just northwest of Indianapolis, and just stood there transfixed. Like, that's the most gorgeous thing ever, and so they, um, I bought the pattern and then had to come home and get it kitted. This is not the colorway I'm doing, but it's called um, Claire's Crazy Quilt, a beginner's course in Hungarian Point Bargello, an Iona Dettelbach design for Rainbow Gallery. And it, it finishes at 15 by 14, I think on a 14 count canvas. I'm doing 18 count, so mine will be smaller than that a little bit. Um, it uses a ton of Rainbow Gallery floss. But here's the design. Lots of different Bargello Florentine stitches. And, and this picture doesn't show, but it's got a lot of metallic in it as well. So I'm stitching mine on a rose, um, let's see if I can hold this up behind here. And still see <laughs> what I'm doing. Yeah, so you can see the metallic in there. I did this, I did this part in just a few days. I mean, it, it, I just couldn't put it down until I did put it down. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, it's, it could be a pillow. I would probably frame it though because of the metallic. Um, ah, I love that. Like I, I forget. This is why it's good to do a, a whip braid, because you forget what you have. And let me show you. When I say there were a lot of flosses, a ton. Like here's the pinks and reds and corals. These were the kind of more purple. And then it's got, like, you saw the silver in it. This is fireworks and treasure chest. Fuzzy stuff in a dark green and a gray. Fireworks. More neon rays and the greens. Fireworks in a white and silver. Oh, and then ribbon. So there's green and pink ribbon. Okay, this was a project that our um, American Needlepoint Guild group no, or EGA. Uh, it might have been our Embroiderers Guild of America chapter. 
anyway, a lot, a lot of people that are in EGA did this a few years ago when it came out in the Needle Arts magazine. And um, it was in the June 2017 issue, Ambrosia Honey. So it was in the June, um, September, December, and March. 2018 issues. Yeah, it was, I think four issues that, you know, part of the pattern was issued in. And I painted my canvas um, kind of a lavender because I I sus wish I had brought a board. Make this so much easier, wouldn't it? But I don't want to go downstairs to get a foam board. So anyway, there's my ambrosia honey. And I still need to stitch my version of the bee, which is a little different. Um, it was some of the directions were just kind of, kind of confusing or um, didn't seem to match up with the picture of the design. The person who designed it did so for her own. She didn't design it to be a class for others or to be printed in a magazine. So there was just some, some little difficulties. So my bee didn't end up fitting correctly. I had to redo its wings. So it's still a work. That's where I got to and I just sort of went. But I will get back to it. As you do all this honeycomb stitch in the background here. And I, I know some of the members in the guild have finished theirs um, a, while, a while ago. So. I need a better system. I can see that now. I need a better system for storing all this stuff. Um, here's another one that several of the ladies decided to stitch together, and I was able to find it on through Stash Unload, I think, or eBay. Uh, Bargello Fantasy by Loretta Spears. She has uh, passed away, and her, as I understand it, her family didn't, they, their decision was not to continue to release patterns from her, so to get a pattern from Loretta Spears, you've got to do a little bit of digging. So, if you're not familiar with needlepoint or canvas work, you may be wondering why several of my designs, most of my designs are on wooden, a wooden frame. They're, they're stretcher bars and they help hold the canvas or um, Congress cloth. This happens to be Congress cloth here. And you see my colorway has some purple and navy blue. In it and silver. There's some silver in there too. But this is a light blue. So, yeah. Just a. And then this, you know, this area here. Still got all this to do. This was a American Needlepoint Guild Stitch of the Month for 2018, and it's by Tony Gertis, the same one that designed that Wright Kimono project, and it's darning patterns. 
and each month a different section, you know, was released um, to give you directions for that section. So I ah, I purchased some. No, I had some pearl cotton. Yes, I had some pearl cotton. I may have purchased some additional colors. I don't remember. Um, but just kind of jewel colors. Light blue, green. And I didn't get very far. But these are darning patterns. And this was a sand, maybe, 18 count mono canvas. This is another monthly uh, darning pattern, I think. Okay, this is by, it's called Gosh Darn. I don't know why. And it's by Blue Dogwood Designs. And so, I, the pattern is free, or was free, um, my brother-in-law gave me the line-drawn canvas, and in complete, if you use the called-for um, flosses, it would look, you know, like that. I... I bought off stash unload some flosses that were meant for another design. Um, and then I added to it. And these, I think these are rayon flosses. Here, I'm going to just hold them up. Here. Shiny. And then I added uh, some other, I believe the yellow was in there, but I added some other flosses of mine, um, kind of jewel, jewel colors. And that's what I got. using my colors. So both of these, 2018, I got down through March. <laughs> That's so sad. Because I love them. And I'm, I so appreciate the gift from my brother-in-law of the canvas. Alright, this is another class by Tony Gertis, uh, Fire and Ice. Uh, let's see, here's the picture. You, If you've seen my early floss tubes, you would have seen this. And she came again to our EGA Guild to teach this. And I think the canvas is a gray, a soft gray. It's just different stitches. <laughs> well, 
I was I was really a big canvas work stitcher before discovering floss tube and kind of picking up some cross stitch patterns at stash cells and Alright, I think I've just got a couple more of the whips. I think. No. Well, yeah. A couple more. Two or three more. This one is from a dimensions kit. From years ago. Snowman and Kitty stocking. Uh, from Dimensions Crafts. And um, I like cats, so that's how I acquired that, or why I acquired that. So then this is the felt for the back. They give you a, a template to cut that out. And I am, I have it all stitched, ready to turn into a stocking. I think I would line it. I would I would put some interfacing on the back of it and line it, and then sew it into a stocking. Okay. And I changed some of my cats to be. Um, look more like cats I had had. Like I had a Siamese cat growing up. And a, my grandmother and I, when I lived with her, we had a cat named Morris that was yellow. And then she had a cat named Greasy who was a Russian blue. And our um, Our cat now, Duchess, is the gray, you know, striped kind of cat. It's all outlined. Yep, everything's outlined. French knots. It's got my name on the top. I should take it off these. Um, bars here and uh, I think I'll I won't do that this minute but I'm I think I will do that before and maybe maybe I won't put it away maybe I'll take it downstairs to try to fully finish okay. oh and then this one another Siamese cat which I, I have several Siamese cat uh, kits. When I retired, I discovered eBay and bought a lot of kits. I had no idea that they were out there. And this is one of the ones I, I bought. It's a Bucilla Needlepoint. It's called Siamese Cat. And it was labeled on the eBay, it was like vintage, you know, kit, rare. <laughs> I've seen it since. Oh. Oh, I've got some more of the... You know, the red that goes in the wallpaper back there. I think this section is all stitched. And this section is all stitched. I just need to finish the cat and do this area here and the red up there, I think. But I tell you, those stitches for the cat, and here's the back. Um, hot mess, huh? Those were hard on my 
finger and thumb. But it definitely gives a, a neat look to it. Those long strands placed haphazardly <laughs> gives you the texture. That, that should have been done. That should have been completed. Because that's a very... Uh, other than, like I said, the difficulty stitching on the cat. Which if I... I think if I had just gotten a thimble or some leather pads or something, I could have... I could have tolerated that and finished that up. Alright. And I think there... Is one more. I'll have to turn the camera off because I gotta get it out, reorganized, and uh, be right back. Okay, welcome back. Um, I have two more turned out whips. This one is rather large, and I made this bag out of strips. A lot of them are like two and a half inch, but different different widths actually and then it has the webbing for the straps this side has pockets it's a, it's actually intended to be a ruler bag where you could put um, your cutting mat and rulers different size rulers and then it's got pockets on the inside as well but I made it, I made it to house this canvas work project. And let's see, I probably ought to show you, hold on. Okay, <laughs> I didn't want to see you, I didn't want you to see me struggling to pull this bag up. This bag was given to us at the Needle Arts Mystery Retreat in Atlanta in 2016. Um, Retreat.com. This is a retreat put on every July in a different city by four designers and they they take turns teaching the stitches for their part of the design. So, the version that I was doing was designed by Debbie Rowley of Debbie's Designs. And I don't know which way is up or down or what have you, but. Um, so each of the designers had a section, right? Either here, here, or here, or here. And then they also each, I think, had one of these sections. And so this was the sage green um, colorway. And so it's a big book. Of patterns um, very well everything very well documented like you know a really nice big book and each designer had their own colorway so if you wanted to stitch it on purple or black See, what were they? Oh, there was one that was, you know, white, beachy colors. Um, one that was on black. And then... purple purple colorway
and lots, I don't know, you really can't see the flosses, but obviously these are blues and greens, uh, purples, lots of different flosses, beautiful. And they, it was so nice they gave us that bag to hold all that stuff. And then here's really can't let's see if I can put something behind it a little bit they had been fairly big designs up through the year I went and then they got you know feedback from the people that were going every year and trying to tackle a big design that they would really like a smaller design so um, you can see I have I have needle minders on all all four sides so I'm gonna some of those out and then put it back in the bag maybe tell you what I'll do that I'll do that after I turn off the camera all right then the last whip to show you is by um, Curdy Biggs again and her company is Riedels. And this is Cat's Eye Cleopatra. She had different colorways. And I wish you could see this finished in person. And I think the, the matting that was done there is awesome. And this is where I'm at. Oh, that was the back side. Sorry. So she had us put the canvas on and stitch in the well instead of, so this is the front. And this is another one where when I saw it, um, I think maybe I saw it at the 2012 National EGA Seminar, maybe. Um, that I just stood there and, and was transfixed. It's got a little ton of beading. Uh, and, but I'm, I was still, you know, stitching stitched stuff and let's see here uh, da, 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 da. where oh threads are in another bag in the corner all right that y'all are my whips <laughs> for my canvas work So I have two painted canvas designs or projects. They're not really, I really can't say they're designs. This is probably a printed, not painted. I, I don't know why I think that. And it's Siamese cats. And I just got a few uh, areas partially stitched. I'm 
trying to use stitches that would somewhat let the background you know still show through so I, I started stitching the cat um, with a particular stitch I went to a needlepoint embellishment class with Julia Snyder at the Needlebug in Montgomery Alabama and she came around and said you know I suggest this stitch or that stitch or what have you and uh, that had a okay that has a couple of needle binders on it pull those off like I need I need needle minders for my cross stitch project <laughs> so okay and then the last one that's painted canvas is my nativity these are all to be done with a, a dark blue background so just to give you an idea I will put up here who who they're designed by and painted by um, so let's see, I've got, I think the donkey and the cow, except obviously the background, the sheep who has uh, French knots, and oh, this is the donkey, this is the donkey. Oh. Is that a deer? Or a camel? Maybe? I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm sure if I read in here it will tell me, but... Um, here's Mary with baby Jesus. And she, Mary, is missing um, her headband. It's beads. It's supposed to be beaded. So I don't. I haven't done any of the beading. And then here's Joseph. A cool looking dude. Shepherd with a sheep. So what I bought was the painted canvas and the stitch guide from the Nimble Needle in Atlanta. I haven't done this wise man, but he will look like that when he's done. I have not done this wise man. And he will look like that when he's done. Sorry for the glare. And this wise man. I love his beard. Alright, very dimensional. So and then the backdrop I'm almost done with. See the blue with a sparkle? And then it's got a, a sheep, a cow, a donkey, and the manger or what have you. I'll show you that next. Isn't that sky amazing? So I'm still working on this. Um, let's see, I've got to do the hay and the sheep and the donkey and the cow and the buildings. I haven't done them. But I tell you, that sky and the grass. Oh, I've started the grass. 
there's the grass. I haven't done this section, so I'm not as far along as I thought. Good grief. I've been working on the shed. It was the last thing I remember doing. First thing I did was the sky. And then I have a jewel um, that goes up here. So, and then there was a, the nimble needle had somebody that was a woodworker that made special frames in this shape. And I never did try to call the guy. They had they had run this as a like a monthly class, and oh look what I found! Like an ort ort container. I didn't know that was in there. Um, so I think when those ladies that were doing it, you know, uh, when it originally came out, I remember seeing this nativity set in a. I don't know if it was the Needlepoint Now or the EGA or ANG magazine, but my husband and I stopped in the Nimble Needle one day, my my first time there, and they had the nativity set up on a shelf, and I was like, oh, I've been wanting a nativity set that I could cross-stitch or Needlepoint, and my husband said, well, you should go ahead and get it, and we priced everything out, and it was over $400, all the threads all the stitch guides, all the canvases, and I was like, are you sure? He was like, yeah. And, I mean, it's been five years or more. I need to finish that. <laughs> I mean, you hear that. We all think that. Why? Why haven't we finished? But, um, I have, have it stored in a um, walker bag, I think they're called, which is great. It's got these big pockets for, you know, I can put the floss, whatever I'm working on, um, needles and stuff down in, and then it's got plenty of room for my notebook and the canvas. So, there you go. All right, I think that's it. If I may discover something else and show it at a future date, but we're gonna we're gonna say we're good for the whips, uh, needlepoint canvas work whips, and I will be back tomorrow. This is gonna come out on Monday, and I'll be back on Tuesday for a parade of my kid kits, the, the canvas work kits that I, I have, that I haven't started. And just looking, it looks like I have fewer than the ones that I'd started on, I hope. <laughs> so thanks for stopping by my stitchy home to see my stash parade. And I hope you're doing well and continue just enjoying your craft, whatever it may be. And I'll see you hopefully tomorrow. Bye, everybody.